Hello and welcome to this DDI CADcast. My name is Cody Armstrong and the topic is What's New 2014? Sketching. So as I mentioned, the topic of this CADcast is sketching and of course the new features in the 2014 release in the area of sketching. So I have a few listed here on my slide I want to start off with. Uh, the first being a new option for conics referred to as automatic tangency. Uh, also new is the ability to set a fixed length spline. There's also a new style of spline referred to as style splines. And then lastly, a new replace entity command that meant to replace sketch entities. So let's jump into the first one, automatic tangency for conics. So this is a new option when you are sketching conics. So what I'm going to do is just call up a quick example of a conic. I'm going to delete this radius. And of course in this scenario, I'd want this conic to be tangent to the line and to the edge of my model. And so in previous versions, what I'd have to do is sketch my conic, place it, and then come back and place my tangent relationships. Right? Actually you have to come in and add relationships. What you'll notice now is an option for auto tangency like the name implies, what it does is it automatically applies those tangent constraints to the conics. So you see the uh, tangent constraint here as well as the tangent constraint there. So those tangent constraints are automatically created because of that auto tangency option in the conics command. Jumping back, I want to get into setting a fixed length spline. So one thing that's always been a limitation in previous versions of SOLIDWORKS is the ability to define the length of a spline and, and to have that being a driving equation or a driving factor in defining your spline. And so now this isn't a setting or an option or a switch or anything and, and you're going to find in SOLIDWORKS is just in the latest version. These things now work. So let me show you an example of this. Here I have a spline that's used to drive the profile of this board. But it's uh, obviously it's underdefined, and the underdefined area is basically the length of this spline. And for instance, if I knew that the you know material that I was cutting this with started with a flat and it happened to be X amount um, was formed into this, then this dimension, this this fixed length of the spline, is a valuable dimension to know and to be able to punch in. So in this scenario, all I'd have to do is smart dimension and select the spline, and you'll see a length dimension pop up. And I just type in the length. 850, OK, and now that defines the length of overall of this spline. So again, not one of those things you're really going to see as a, a setting or an option or, or something that's um, going to behave entirely differently. It's just one of those things that now works in the 2014 release. So let's jump back and move on to the next one, and that is style splines. So the next thing I'd like to get into is a new command called style spline. And what you'll see when selecting the spline toolbar is a new command here, style spline. The way it works is you use sketch geometry, normal lines, to create a spline. And the reasoning behind this is it's a very simple way to create a smooth spline very quickly. And you'll see here I'm just drawing lines, but these lines have a spline attached to them. So I'm really using the lines uh, more as construction geometry for the spline, but it allows me to very quickly create a very smooth spline. The nice thing about this too is you can come in and constrain this in ways you would a normal sketch. So I can, for instance, constrain these construction geometry uh, lines and define them as I see fit. So I can come in and define all the geometry associated with this style spline and really dial in what it looks like um, with my finished result. Also, if I sketched it like this but decided later on I needed to add a little bit more control to it, I can right-click any one of these lines, these construction lines, and you'll see an option for Insert Control Vertex. And it just allows me, it's basically like a split point command, it allows me to um, split it and then use that as an additional control point for my style spline. But again, I think uh, style splines are for those that may not be an expert in getting perfectly smooth splines. It's a very easy way to construct using very basic tools a very smooth contour uh, in your splines. 
So that is the new style splines. The next thing I want to move on to is the replace entity command. So the replaced entity command is meant to replace sketch entities. And I want to jump into an example of this because I think it has a lot of useful examples. But the biggest one is a scenario like this where I have my existing spline sketch from my last example. And basically what I want to do is I want to replace this spline with my new style spline. So I have this old design of the spline and I have this new design of the spline. Basically what I would do in old versions is I would delete one and let it rebuild with the other. And the problem with this uh, is the downstream features in my tree that were linked to this original spline. And so oftentimes what you'd have to do is you'd have to go back down your tree and just resolve all the warnings about um, dangling re relationships, dangling references, and fix all those issues after you made a change like this. So now in those scenarios, what you can do is call up a command called replace entities. It's under Tools, Sketch Tools. You'll see down here, Replace. Replace Entities. It's a very simple command. You replace this with this. right? So I'd select my old spline for the top dialog box. Replace with this one. I'd select my new style spline. Now I have options to leave it as construction geometry, leave the original as construction geometry, or delete the original. I'm just going to leave it as construction, hit OK, and now if I exit this sketch, the biggest thing about this is I don't have to go back and rebuild all the features that may be referencing that old spline. So anything that was tied to that old spline now automatically updates. So that is the new replace entity command. Again, really useful for replacing sketch entities. Let's jump on, jump on over to the next slide. So the Sketch Picture Scale tool is actually a new option inside of the Sketch Picture command. So I'm going to go ahead and call up Sketch Picture and choose a picture to embed in my sketch. And what you'll see is a new option on the left hand side for Enable Scale Tool. And you'll see this bar on the image itself. This is the Scale Tool. And the Scale Tool allows me to essentially snap to a known size and then punch that value in and automatically scale the image. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to drag this up to a known size. For instance, I know the, the width of the head of this blow dryer is uh, six and a half inches, for instance. Right? So I drag it from this point and I say, okay, from this point I know to this point, I know that distance is six and a half. So I drag that bar, I let go. As soon as I let go, I get prompted for a dimension. I'm going to say six and a half. And it automatically scales that image to match the six and a half. So now the image is automatically scaled. And you could even use this bar to drag and locate the image. So now I can use this and actually snap right to the origin with it. Okay. You could even use this to clock, so to speak, or to rotate the angle. And so I think this uh, just eliminates a lot of the eyeballing, uh, so to speak, that I saw when a lot of people would insert sketch pictures. They would just manually make manipulations to the angle or, or the X or Y offsets to get it just right. But it was a very um, time-staking, kind of a tedious process. So now with the Enable Scale tool, the Scale tool option, uh, it just simplifies that process of getting it constrained where you want it, getting it to the right size and in the right orientation. So let's jump on to the next one maintaining proportions in a sketch profile. So the next enhancement is probably one of my favorites and it's not one of those settings or options or switches or anything like that. It's just one of those things that works better in the 2014 release and that is maintaining proportion when editing dimensions in a sketch profile. And So I want to show you an example of this and I think we've all been in that situation where you start creating your sketch and then you add your first dimension and the sketch just implodes. Right? It, for lack of a better word, you know, you end up with something that looks, you know, doubled over on itself, something like this for instance. Um, and so we've all added that first dimension all of a sudden everything just kind of blows up for lack of a, a better word. Um, what you'll notice in 2014 is the first dimension that you place, for instance, when I go, call up smart dimension, I call up this, this circle, for instance, you'll see the dimension there is 99.86. 99 
if I change this dramatically, let's say I change it to like 30, the rest of the sketch will will scale with that change. Now the hard thing to 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 do is show this to you because it doesn't really change. If I hit OK, you don't really see anything change, but that's really what's key. The entire sketch is scaling to match that dimension. So now my next dimension is closer to the value based on the first dimension that I punched in. And so I think this is really useful for those that you know really went out of their way to create a, a, dra a dramatic sketch, a lot of lines and things like that, and then came back and started adding dimensions, and then only to realize that everything was 10 times the size that it actually needed to be. The first, uh, the first dimension will now scale everything to match that size. So again, it's not one of those options or settings or switches or anything. It's just one of those things that works better um, the proportions are maintained when you're editing or you're adding that first dimension in a sketch. The next thing I want to jump into are path length dimensions. Path length dimensions are a new type of dimensions for SOLIDWORKS 2014. And so for scenarios like this, maybe for a belt or chains or things like that, where I want to know the overall length of a specific path, we now have a specific type of dimension called path length dimension to do just that. And the way it works is you first define it as a path length dimension, and you define what your path is. And I'm just going to go along and select all the entities. Of course, I could do a select chain, accomplish the same thing, but I'm really just defining what my path is. Once I've done that, I hit OK, and it applies a path length dimension. Now, for instance, if, if for whatever reason this got deleted, um, this is still defined as a path. So if I come back with smart dimension, or a, excuse me, path length dimension, and just select anywhere on the path, it'll find and recognize that it is a path length dimension. Right? So it, it is embedding that within the property. If I select any line on the path, you'll see path properties. I can set a valued length here, for, right? set a driving dimension. Also what's nice about this is you can set this dimension to driven, and test out all kinds of different scenarios. So I can drag this, for instance, and watch the path length change kind of dynamically, right? Just by moving you know, everything around, watch this path length change because, of course, it's a driven dimension. So just some of the neat things you can do with the new path length dimension. You'll see it here under the Smart Dimension toolbar. Jumping back, let's move on to sketch equations. So the last two things I want to cover with this particular CAD cast are the enhancements to sketch equations and the inclusion of stick fonts for SOLIDWORKS 2014. So the first one is sketch equations and this is just a real subtle thing. Now when you go to tools equations you're going to see a sketch equation view which allows you to see any equations that were created at the sketch level. So it's just a different filter category but allows you to apply sketch equations um, at the sketch level, right, in the modified dialog box by hitting equal and have them automatically populate in the sketch equation view of your tools equations. So it just helps you to organize the, the equations you may have created in the sketch level. The last thing I want to get into is the use of stick fonts. And I've been asked several times, do we have any kind of stick fonts? And the answer is no until um, this latest release, at least not with the standard SOLIDWORKS. So I'm just going to build a real basic part here. And what we want to do is add some font to it. So I'll add an extrude. And I just want to uh, put some font in it, for, perhaps for like an engraved purpose. And I think that's what most people are looking for um, when, they, when they're trying to add the engrave. So I'm going to go ahead and add font. And I'm going to uncheck use document font. I'm going to go into the font dialog and find the font that I'm looking for. Now the font that we're looking for is OLF Simple Sans OC. I'm going to define the size. Let's go all the way up to size 72. Hit OK. And then we'll just type this is a test. And you'll see if I zoom in here, the stick font that is created. And a lot of, like I said, I think that most people asking for this are coming from the uh, manufacturing realm. So maybe machinists looking for engraving style fonts. They don't want the shadow style fonts. It's typical of true type fonts. Um, this gives them a quote unquote stick font. Also those doing um, laser cutting or anything like that. 
Uh, it's a very common thing that, that I get asked a lot is, do you have any kind of stick font? So now with SOLIDWORKS 2014, we have an out-of-the-box st uh, stick font in the form of the um, OLC or OLF Simple Sans OC. So you'll just see it as a font type when you're browsing fonts in the sketch text command. So those are the new enhancements to sketching for the 2014 release. For more CADcasts, visit us at www.youtube.com forward slash ddicad or www.ddicad.com forward slash techcenter.